Welcome to Parrots of the Caribbean, not Pirates of the Caribbean, Parrots. Okay, great. Well, welcome to our event. We're going to start off with um, the Executive Director of Birds Caribbean, that's Lisa Sorensen, and she's going to say hi, and then she's going to introduce our uh, biologist, our parrot biologist and conservationist from Trinidad, Aliyah Hussein. And so wonderful. So let's invite you up. Let's get uh, Lisa up here. Um, training. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. We're all four of us up on screen here. Okay, great. Let's get started, Lisa. What would you like to um, start with? Okay, so hi. Welcome, everybody. Um, Christine, I'm not seeing the presentation. Do you want to bring that up? Uh, yeah. You see now? So, not yet. It's full screen seeing, now. I'm just seeing me and Aaliyah big on the screen. That's it. Okay. Well, I see the full screen. Hey, chat box folks, do you see the slideshow here? Parrots of the Caribbean? Maybe you're lagging or something. Um, yeah. We yeah, see it. Let's see it. Okay. okay. So Parrots of the Caribbean is large on screen. Wow. Um, okay. That's that strange because I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I'm only seeing it. Yeah. You might have your setting different. Yeah. So your setting is different. We're, I'm controlling the settings from my angle. So you might see something different depending. Okay. So everybody's saying yes, yes, yes. Okay. Let's go, Lisa. Um, okay. Uh, hi, everybody. It's really good to have you. Uh, so today, this is another webinar in our series that we are doing for the Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival, which is ongoing now. It's a celebration for one month in the spring, and we're celebrating all of the endemic birds of the islands. There's actually 171 endemic species. So every, every day we're posting a new bird, a new endemic bird of the day, and we're providing information on the bird, um, online activities, puzzles, games, videos, eBooks, um, and more on our website. So I invite you to join us on our festival. And this is being put on by Birds Caribbean. And we work with a lot of partners all over the islands to celebrate the Endemic Bird Festival. And of course this year it's virtual because of the pandemic. So we've been having a lot of fun doing webinars and uh, posts online and also on social media. So be sure to follow us at Birds Caribbean. And uh, let's see, I'm not seeing the slides at all. So can you go to the second slide? Oh, sorry. Um, you might want to look on your Facebook live feed too. And you okay, can double so check if that's working. I don't know if I can turn, I don't think I should turn that on because it was playing and I was getting feedback from that. So I'll just oh, look at that on my phone. On your phone, yeah, with the sound yeah. turned off. Uh, right. And it might be um, a little bit out of sync. I'm not sure, but it's that out of might sync. Be right, right. Oh, oh okay. So anyway, later. we're on the logo page. <laughs> okay. And Ali, are you seeing the slides? Okay. We're not yeah. hearing her, but I don't know if she's seeing them either. Because if I can't see them, maybe she can't see them. And oh, she wait. needs to see them to give the presentation. Ali, yeah. I can hear you. I can... Okay. I can't see the slides either, but... I could pull it up on my computer because I'm not sharing screen. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's really strange because we're not seeing the slide yeah. presentation at all. We're only seeing each oh. other. Okay, well, yeah. we're on. Go, oh, no. Yeah, well, I guess you should pull it up on your phone then. <laughs> okay. Um, or, yeah, just pull it up, pull up the, uh, the crowdcast on your phone, not the Facebook. Um, and then you should be able to see it. Okay. All right, so are we on the second slide now with the CEBF image? Yes, that's right. Okay, okay great. All right, so um, anyway, I'm ready to move on and introduce our speaker for today, um, Aliyah Hossein. We're really delighted to have Aliyah join us from Trinidad. Um, Aliyah has a master's degree in conservation biology, and she is a member of our Birds Caribbean Media Working Group. And this is a group that works, that meets together every month and we plan articles for the media, we write blog articles, we post on social media, and so it's a really active, fun group. We always welcome new members if you wanna join us. So is a um, really great writer, and she's also a really, um, I would say she's a little obsessed with parrots. 
Um, <laughs> she's a she's a parent aficionado and expert, and she's right now working on a campaign to reduce. Um, the consumption of illegal wildlife products in Trinidad and Tobago. So uh, she's going to join us right now and give us um, some really fun and interesting natural history and folklore about Caribbean parrots, and also talk a little about a little bit about their threats and how everybody can help to conserve Caribbean parrots. So take Good. it away, Aaliyah. Do you see the slides now, Aaliyah? No, I still can see them, but I can use the PowerPoint presentation. Hmm. Okay. You don't have your phone or another monitor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I don't know. Everybody, uh, let's see. I've got four slides yeah. up. Everybody. Can we see all four of us? We got us, uh, me, all three of us, and the true parrots slide is up. Um, sometimes if you uh, log out and log back in to an event, it might help. Uh, that seems to help. So you might try doing that. Um, otherwise, if you want to wing it with the slides, we're on the true parrot slide. <laughs> or you could sign in with your phone <laughs> and look at it from there. So, um, I can just ask with my the slides that I have open and I'll let you know when to go to the next slide. Thank you. Great. That's no problem here. Okay. All right. So, okay. okay. Hi, everyone. Again, um, thank you, Lisa, for the introduction. And yes, I am a biologist, especially fond of parrots and maybe, <laughs> maybe obsessed. And I've been obsessing over parrots for about nine years. So I'm really, really excited to be able to talk to you all today about Caribbean endemic parrots. All right. The parrots belong to the family Cetacidae, and they, together with the macaws, the parakeets, and parakeets, form this family. They all have a downward curved beak and zygodactyl beak. And what this just means is that they have two toes in front and two toes behind. So two facing forward and two facing behind. But you can distinguish them by their body size. So parrots, they are more stuffy and they have um, broad wings and short teeth compared to the macaws and the parakeets. So the macaw is in the second photo and parakeets in the third photo. They have pointy, uh, pointy wings and long, slender teeth. Okay, so we could go to the next one. Uh, what's on the menu? Uh, no, um, and then make Caribbean power. Okay, there we go. All righty. Right. Everybody's seeing yeah. all of us. Christine. Okay. Christine. Yep. Uh, so what we're seeing is four quarters of equal right. size. We're not seeing the slideshow as the main image. Okay, there we go. Okay, slideshow is the main image now. Those are beautiful stamps. Okay, let's let's move on. We're all ready. All right. Okay, so Great. parrots live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Continue. Yep. 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 Okay. The parrots live in forests, savannas, and swamps. They can be found in South America, Africa, Asia, Australia, and the Caribbean. Uh, we have parrots in the Greater and Lesser Antilles, and we do have two endemic parakeets as well, the Hispaniola and parakeet and Cuban parakeet. But for this presentation, I will only be focusing on parrots from the Amazon genus. Next one. There we go. So what's on the menu? Yes. All right. So parrots, as you may already know, they eat nuts and fruits. But sometimes they could eat flowers, leaves, and even insects. And in this photo of the Cuban parrot, I think it's on a native Indian tree. But if we have a botanist in the group, you could correct me. So parrots could either pick the fruit from the bunch and eat it or eat the fruit directly from the bunch itself. And sometimes 
they would actually take the fruit away to another tree. Parrots have um, very strong bills. Their bills are attached to their skull, so they have a lot of force, and that helps them to open um, not especially but had outer layers. So think of like almond that we would use and not prefer to open. And while this is helpful for the parrot, it also helps other smaller food bowls that may not be able to open these fruits to get to the pulp or even get to the seed. And I, I just explained that they transport the fruit. Sometimes they drop it. And when they drop it to the base of the tree as well, they make it available to other fruit bowls like agoutis or deer. Okay, next slide. Birds of a feather flock together. Yep. Yep, there we go. Birds of a feather flock together. All right. So parrots, they live in flocks. That means they sleep together, they feed together, and they, they, spend most, sorry, they spend most of their time together. What researchers have found is that parrots don't usually repeat the calls. So like, you know, if you have a kiskadi, you'll keep hearing kiskadi, kiskadi, kiskadi repeated. It's not the same with parrots. Their communication is very flexible and they can structure their calls to communicate different needs. So if, for example, they want to woo a potential mate or they want to find another parrot within that flock or even warn others of um, uh, impending danger. The yellow bill parrot especially, they, like all other parrots, they live in flocks and they feed, which means again, they feed in flocks. But they would have designated guards and these guards would be posted on branches above the feeding flock. And they would signal to the other parrots within that flock if, for example, there is a approaching predator. And again, that contact call would be different. Okay, next one, telling the difference. Telling the difference. Right. Okay, so I want you all to look at these two photos carefully. And let us know in the chat which one you think is the male and which is the female. Is it the one on the right is the male and the one on the left is the female or vice versa? So Aaliyah is asking um, if you can tell which one is the male or the female. So why don't you tell us which one you think is the um, male? So type left or right if if you think that's yes. where the male is. Okay. Is the male on the left or the right? Did you have some more hints for us? Uh, no, just to look at the look. Okay, so Liza is saying right. Right is male or female? Left is male, can't tell, you can't tell the difference. Left. Would look right. To be honest, we can't look at parrots and tell a male from a female. Um, this means that they are not dimorphic, like the hummingbirds you all would have heard about from the last webinar, where you can use physical characteristics to tell males and females apart. This just isn't true for our Caribbean endemic species. Okay. Great. Next slide, lovebirds. Lovebirds. Right, okay. So parrots, they pair bond for life. And what this means is that when they find a mate, they stick to that one mate breeding season after breeding season. They use all tree holes, termite nests. Termite nests more so for the smaller parakeets and parrotlets. And even some nests in the ground, like the Bahama parrot from the Bahamas, 
they would usually lay between two and eight eggs but out of those eight eggs only three would hatch it takes about 28 days for the eggs to hatch and during the incubation period the female um, parrot stays with the egg and the male would go out and find food and bring it back to the female after about 90 days the chicks are ready to leave the nest but that but that doesn't mean that they leave the nest and they fly off and they live their own separate parrot life they stay with the parents for about a year and during this time the parents um, teach the, the, um, their offspring where to fly where to find food and they even use this time to um, introduce them to the other to the flock that they that the parents belong to okay next slide parrots at risk parrots at risk right okay unfortunately and this is the sad part of the talk but we still have to address it unfortunately many parrots uh threatened and some have even gone extinct um, we had a cuban macaw and that is now extinct the two main um, threats the parrot population uh, habitat loss and this could be through natural disaster like hurricanes and storms uh, even deforestation for development and agriculture what makes this especially bad for parrots on islands is that they lose their food resources and they also lose nesting sites. And if it is that the majority of their known nesting sites are lost, it's not like on a continent where these parrots could move and find other suitable areas to nest. Next slide, parrots at risk. Parrots at risk. Right. Another major threat to wild parrot populations is trapping to the pet trade. Parrots are beautiful, they are smart, they can mimic speech, they can mimic a crying baby, they can mimic a barking dog, which is all very amusing. So we understand that attraction. And to be honest, pet parrot keeping has been ongoing for many, many years. But this does not make it right at all. Parrots are wild food. And what I mean is that if you take the parrot and you bring it home, it doesn't make it domesticated like a, like a cat or a dog. They still retain a lot of their wild instincts. So they would be squawking at, a, at around 5 a.m. and then again at around 5 p.m. They, they are known to travel miles for food and they are very social because they live in flocks. If you take them out of that environment and you put them in a cage, as we see in this photo, it stresses them out. And that is why sometimes you see pet parrots um, plucking their feathers. Uh, that is a sign of stress. So, so pet, um, trapping for the pet, um, pet trade is really, really, horrible and right now parrot populations cannot sustain that trade because um, the people who go into trap parrots they take a lot more than is needed because parrots usually a majority of the parrots usually die before even reaching a potential parrot owner so this is just um, not a pet that you would want to keep. It's not a gift that you would want to receive. It's, it's just um, parrots really do belong in the wild. Yep. Next one. Yep. Jacko Parrot inspires a global movement. St. Lucia Parrot Song. Right. All right. So during the late 1970s, there were about 150 St. Lucia parrots left. Um, it's locally called Jacko. And 
again, these foods were threatened by the pirate trade and loss of habitat, and that's why their numbers dwindled. But a young graduate named Paul Butler worked together with the forestry department on the island of St. Lucia to create a conservation plan to boost these numbers and then protect the bird in the wild. But they knew that they needed public support, meaning the residents of St. Lucia, to make this um, project a sustainable one. Around that same time, St. Lucia had become an independent nation. So they used that declaration to catapult this outreach program focused on the St. Lucia parish. They used songs, they used kits, they had billboards, they had bumper stickers. <laughs> Basically, the St. Lucia Parrot was everywhere. And this really worked well because the St. Lucians were able to identify with this St. Lucia Parrot. It was their own parrot and was a parrot that could not be found anywhere else. So it really helped them boost their national pride. Um, next slide. In the Parrot chat box, everyone is asking you to sing it. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, no, we'll have horrible weather. Maybe we can but put a link have... on the Facebook page later to a recording. Yeah, <laughs> I do have another. Um, so I'll play that and hopefully you all can hear it. Okay. okay. All right. Parents of the identity. Right. So this um, strategy was so successful that Paul Butler repeated it in Dominica for the Sisteru or the Imperial Pirates, as well as on St. Vincent and the Grenadines for the St. Vincent Amazon. And it again, the effect was the same. The Cicero could only be found on Dominica. It was one of them they needed to um, they needed to protect this food. And today I believe because the Cicero is featured on the um, flag of Dominica, it's the only flag to have purple, the color purple in it. And speaking of flag, the colors of the St. Vincent Amazon could also be found on the St. Vincent um, National Flag. Again, they use the same um, song, skits, and billboards to get people more aware or to make people more aware of these fascinating books. I'm going to try to play the St. Vincent Amazon song. And let me know if you all can hear it. Okay. Yes. I am extending this message. I want to be loved and blessed. I want every intention to be quite aware that the pride of this country is a very bad. It's getting very rare. They feel I just know it for the end of the world. God, as the time is now, we can't afford to lose it. So, I'm going to get me proud. Right. So, here he's singing about it being the pride and the need to protect it. Good. Yes, the chat box yeah. is saying, Me encanta la musica. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. It's a, it's a very catchy song. Yes. Yes. Um, right, so this campaign worked so well in the Caribbean that they they included other species too. So I believe it was the Montserrat Oreo, as well as the hummingbird on Tobago. And then it moved on to the rest of the world. I believe the, this strategy has been repeated in um, over 50 countries. And not only um, for birds, but for like fisheries and sustainable agriculture and so on. Next slide. All right, parrots and Caribbean identity yeah. tweets. Right. So I'm just sharing an example of how successful 
the campaign was. I traveled to St. Vincent before the pandemic. And keep in mind, I am used to seeing a, an orange winged parrot that's small and mostly green. Uh, so when I saw this parrot in real life, I was completely blown away. And so I decided I needed to share this with everyone on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. When I shared this photo within about five hours, I received 147 likes and 42 retweets. And when they retweeted, it was hashtag Vinci, hashtag um, Pride, hashtag Caribbean. So you can see years and years after, the effect of the campaign is still very much alive and ongoing. And you could see that, well, or at least I can see that just from the response I got from this one um, tweet. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Okay, next slide. How you can help parrots. Okay, how you can help parrots. Yeah, okay. So not everyone <laughs> would have the resources to um, plan and execute a big uh, island-wide island -wide campaign. But for now, what you all can do is start to learn more about parrots, their biology and their behavior in the wild. And then share these with other people, especially people who who are thinking oh, these might make good pets. And obviously, you or if you all are able, please support parrot conservation pro project by donate by donating or volunteering your time. I don't think we will ever not need donations for conservation um, projects. Next slide. Okay. Yeah. Puzzle. Right. So, yes. So for now, you can help us celebrate Caribbean endemic parrots. Again, please be sure to visit visit birdscaribbean.org. Each day a different bird is featured. And you will receive coloring pages, activities, puzzles, videos, and many more and many more resources, and they are all free. <laughs> so you don't have to pay, so please visit and download. And please um, like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you do um, complete any of the activities or puzzles and you share it to your social media, again, please remember to use the hashtag CEBF from the nest and tag at food caribbean great right. Link, maybe you can put those in the chat box for us okay are we are we um ready to move on okay i muted Aaliyah, and we're gonna move on to our next phase and um Oh, yeah, yeah. I muted both of you because I am hearing some things there. Okay, great. So, so here we are getting our next phase here ready. Okay, great. Right. Yes. So we're moving on to the second phase. Thank you so much, uh, Lisa, for your um, introduction, as well as Aaliyah telling us all about the parrots of the Caribbean and, and what is... Um, threatening their existence. Uh, yeah. So in the chat box, we've got lots of great presentation, Aaliyah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Wonderful. So I'm going to keep you guys up on stage here, um, but muted for now. And if um, I have some questions, I'll have you uh, chime in. Okay. Um, so if you can hear me say like this. <laughs> okay. Maybe they can't hear me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway. So Moving on. Hello. How are you guys? Can you see me and hear me? You should be able to see me. Good. Mary says, very informative. Yes. Louise says he can hear. 
Okay, great. You guys are all good. All right. So um, like we said, this month, we're wrapping up our month long virtual uh, endemic Caribbean endemic bird festival. And we're also launching this new book, which many of you already know about the endemic birds of the West Indies coloring book, which I happen to um, illustrate. And we had a whole team of people working on the design and the writing and um, the publication and all that. So Anyway, if you like endemic birds, especially parrots, um, go find yourself a copy of that. We can, you can get that on the Birds Caribbean website. Maybe uh, Lisa can put a link to that. Looks like she's going to do that. Okay, so um, the next second part of our workshop is where I'm going to be uh, mainly talking a little bit about the parts of the birds so that we can draw them. So um, if you've been following me along for very long, you know that I'm a naturalist, environmental educator, and visual artist, and I love combining learning about nature as well as art. So my motto is learning to draw while drawing to learn. And so the best way to learn how to draw something besides just um, practicing is knowing about the species you're drawing. So we're going to talk a little bit about the parts and show you some pretty pictures of some of these beautiful endemic, um, uh, I was going to say hummingbirds, that was last month, <laughs> parrots. Great. Lisa has put a link in the chat box um, to ordering the uh, coloring book. You can get that um, sent to you in the mail. Yeah. So anyway, how we roll, obviously, you guys know about the chat box. You see that. You can ask um, and answer questions there. And uh, Lisa, our co-host, the executive director there of Birds Caribbean, who started us off, she... Um, can uh, chime in in the chat box too. So if you don't want to see the chat box, you can minimize it down below somewhere here <laughs> and you can maximize the um, this, this screen. Okay. And um, let me see, I was going to try to do this. Oh, wait, now we have everybody up here. Now we have everybody up here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, great. And so we already talked about the um, Caribbean endemic parrots a bit, and I will show you some pictures. And Aaliyah did mention that there are some uh, parakeets as well. Um, and so there's a whole variety of them. Some of them are just on one island, some are on several islands. And so we are focusing on the parrots today and drawing the parrots. So not, not the macaws or the parakeets, we're looking at parrots specifically. Okay, and so going big slides here now, you've seen me enough. Uh, so again, if you want to learn how to draw something, the best way is to really know about its parts, especially its external anatomy, uh, and so that you can draw it. And hopefully my goal is for you to be able to draw things out in the field. Uh, now, you might not be able to see one of these endemic parrots, but you could draw something uh, in your backyard like the banana quit <laughs> or a robin or a, a cardinal or a blue jay or something like that. And so, like I said today, we're focusing on parrots. Now, within the bigger group are macaws, which um, are more on the um, mainland of Central and South America. And you can see how they're different in that they have this uh, bare cheek. Uh, that's white with some stripes, which is unique to each individual. And then they have a much longer tail. So these, that's what the macaws look like. And also the parakeets have that really long tail. So anyway, that's not what we're looking at today. We're looking at the other group of more true parrots. And um, here's an example of one of the coloring pages that you can get when you um, go on the Birds Caribbean website uh, or go on the Birds Caribbean Facebook page. They've been... Um, uh, talking about a different species of endemic bird every single day. And they give you lots of links to some really fun activities like those crossword puzzles and those songs and those kind of things. Yeah. So anyway, just going to show a few images of these beautiful endemic parrots while I point out a few things that we're going to want to notice when we draw. Because in just a few minutes, we're going to draw together. I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step, um, slideshow. No, I mean, not slideshow, step-by-step -step, uh, video of how to draw the bird. And you can follow along if you can. Uh, but if you don't have any pencil or paper, if you're afraid of drawing, please don't go away. Stick with us and um, you'll learn a lot in just the process of, of seeing these images, talking about the body parts, and then watching me draw the parts of the body. 
Okay, so anyway, here's uh, uh, the imperial parrot. And so you can notice uh, his beautiful, his or her beautiful eye. So different species of parrots have different colors of eyes, uh, that beautiful uh, colored iris with a black pupil inside. And of course the size of the pupil can change whether it's a light or dark outside. And then you can see its bill and the bills vary in color. Um, you know, often they are dark because uh, dark bills have melanin, which makes them, uh, it's a pigment, which makes the bill much stronger. But you have that really obviously hooked bill and you can see the nose too. So that's a little bit different than most other birds is that you can really see that big um, nostril hole right there surrounded by a little circle of flesh. And um, you can see his beautiful coloration. So as we um, look at uh, these slides, as we go, you'll notice they all have different colorations. So now, of course, if you were in the islands, uh, there are certain parrots you're only going to see on certain islands. So that's one way to tell um, what parrot you might be looking at and sketching. Um, also, their size uh, and their habitat, uh, but also their color patterns or their plumages. And so once they get this adult plumage, which does look pretty similar within males and females, um, as we're chatting about and talking about in the chat box, um, they both the males and females are generally very beautiful. And uh, so here's just another beautiful illustration, uh, a historic uh, illustration on the left from an early uh, English naturalist, and then a photograph, of course, here on the right. And so here you see his beautiful plumage and often their feathers, especially on the chest, uh, are kind of looking scaly. So they have quite big feathers. Um, so you'll really notice that when you're drawing them, as individual feathers are quite large. And you can see their uh, really unique feet. Um, and with all of these lines and bumps on them, and I'll show you more feet pictures in a minute. And here's another image of uh, the imperial parrot uh, perched on a uh, palm tree, I believe. <laughs> so uh, he's eating something as Aaliyah was talking about. They have a wide variety of foods they eat, uh, but mainly uh, herbivores. <laughs> and you can uh, be inspired by other artists, uh, like this beautiful painting by Christopher Cox. And this can sh shows you uh, very well, you know, their tropical habitat. So throughout most of the Caribbean, you know, there are different sorts of habitats like mangroves and wetlands and savannas uh, and lowland rainforests, but there's also higher elevation cloud forests as well. So it depends on what island you're at, what kind of habitat they're in. But this is a very typical habitat that you might see them in and might um, draw in your drawing. So they're perched here on a, a big branch that's covered in um, lichens and mosses and ferns and all kinds of epiphytes like bromeliads and orchids. And in the background, one of the most common trees of the Caribbean, um, the Saiba tree. Uh, and here is a Puerto Rican parrot eating one of its favorite foods. So as we spoke about before, they eat a lot of nuts and berries and even sometimes some insects for some protein. And uh, here's another image where you can see in some parrots, uh, the eye is surrounded by some bare skin. Sort of like in that macaw that I showed you earlier where the entire cheek was bare. Um, so some species have a, a, a lighter area that has no feathers around it. Uh, and then you can see, obviously, different parrot species have different colors of bills. So that's something you want to notice, too, when you're drawing. And then the plumage. So most, most, many, many of the world's parrots <laughs> and near relatives are you know, shades of green. Uh, and our parrots have also lots of um, shades of uh, blues and yellows and reds. Uh, but in other parts of the world and, and other parts of the um, neotropics, you get other colors um, of parrots, like blue ones. <laughs> Yeah, Pranjal, you talked about the great green macaw. Macaw, yeah, no, that's not what this is. Um, but yeah, I have seen the great green macaw in um, Costa Rica. It's quite rare.
Yes. Okay. And so this is that beautiful St. Lucia parrot. And in this picture, um, I wanted to point out a few things you want to notice when you're drawing. Again, uh, about the feet, they have these uh, unique sort of parrot feet where just two toes go forward and two toes go back to branch, to grasp the branch. And as you guys probably know, if you've taken many of my workshops on birds, uh, you know, most birds, like most of the songbirds, they have three toes pointing forward and just one toe that wraps around the back of the branch. Here um, in this image, you also see their tail, the St. Lucia parrot tail very well, and how those feathers overlap very clearly. So you want to notice that when you're sketching. It's really important um, to show. Maria, yes, there's four toes. Two go forward and two go back. And there's an image of the St. Vincent parrot coming out of its nest. So often, uh, like Aaliyah said, they do um, nest in a variety of places, but often they nest in uh, old uh, dead trees so they can uh, excavate a nest. So just like a um, a, a, a woodpecker. You might have been in one of my woodpecker uh, workshops and uh, they excavate nests so they're nice and safe from most predators. And then here's the St. Vincent parrot, beautiful coloration. Uh, and you can just see them flying. Uh, like Aaliyah said, they're really social and gregarious. So when you do see them flying overhead, there's usually uh, pairs of them because they pair for life, like she said. But sometimes there's bigger groups and they're almost always really raucous and noisy. So you'll, you'll probably hear them coming before you see them. And this uh, image just shows you the very uh, beautiful color patterns on this species. And the yellow-billed parrot here from the uh, coloring book, which again, you can get online at birdscaribbean.org. Yeah. Um, and um, so this is showing the yellow-billed parrot eating some flowers. So when you're sketching, you might want to add um, something that they're doing, something that they're eating. Um, so some vegetation, some fruit or nuts or flowers in with your drawing. Okay, and then the aptly named yellow-billed parrot has a yellow bill because that's kind of unique. And it is showing here how dexterous they are with their feet. So again, they've got two toes forward and two toes back, and that really helps them to be able to grasp um, not only their food, like the, the fruits and nuts, uh, but also to be able to uh, walk along the branches and be really um, able to climb and grasp quite well. And then another image of the yellow-billed parrot. Um, yeah, and so here, depending on how your bird is posed, which is true with any kind of bird you draw, um, you want to really look at the field marks and how sometimes those field marks can be kind of hidden depending on how the bird is uh, perched. So, you know, like this um, on the tail, this yellow and red is just about uh, nearly covered because this yellow billed parrot is at rest and holding everything um, close. Uh, so here's a close up then of those unique parrot feet. They call them zygodactyl um, toe arrangement where there's two forward and two back. And you can also see how the toe is covered by all of these little uh, kind of circular scales that sort of vary um, along the length of the, the toe. And um, we'll see that a bit when we're drawing, although that'll be a little bit small, but you might want to uh, watch this, um, come back to watch this replay. Now, also remember you can at any time watch this replay and it's also streaming on Facebook, the um, Birds Caribbean Facebook page. And so you can come back to this replay and look at the different images to help you practice sketching. And so you might want to come back and look at this part of the toe. Uh, in this image of the Cuban parrot with his just beautiful, bright white forehead there, um, you can also see how the tail feathers are overlapping. And this image shows very well this area just right behind the, um, right below the branch. These are called the undertail coverts. And those are little um, feathers that cover the under part of the tail. So that's something uh, you might want to add in your sketches to notice. 
Um, yeah, okay, and so here's another image. We'll see pretty much this in the bird we're sketching. Uh, and we will talk a bit about the parts of the feathers because, um, you know, one of the things that really sometimes intimidates people about drawing birds is all of the feathers and how to arrange them. And it can be um, really confusing. Let me get up here for a minute so I can uh, say hi to you and show you this. <laughs> Let me see. Let me just look real quick before we move on. I'm looking at uh, the chat box. and. Um, Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, I see. Okay, great. So anyway, um, so a lot of people are intimidated about drawing birds because of all the feathers and they don't understand the arrangement of them. And that definitely took me quite a while to get a grasp of that. Um, so there's kind of two ways to go with that. You can either keep it really light and loose and just look at the basic, like the silhouette of the bird, kind of like at this size of the bird, he's smaller since you're seeing my face. You just see this big oval outline of the bird and kind of a rectangular tail and a triangular um, bill. And you don't see a lot of details. You just see sort of the um, half moon scalloping of the wings. And, you know, you can just go with that. That's fine if you want to. We're going to do a little bit more detail than that, but not too much. But anyway, if um, you get your hands on any kind of a bird identification field guide, there's usually a couple pages right in the front, just like there are in our um, Caribbean endemic coloring book. It shows you the parts of the bird and the parts of the wing. And um, the more you study that beforehand, the more it'll really help you to give you some uh, confidence and, and understanding, seeing a bit of the, um, the pattern or the method to the madness, as they might say. Um, but there are different parts of the wing that uh, allow them to fly better. The, um, the uh, secondaries up here, well, there's a lot of coverts up here, some layers, uh, rows of covert feathers that cover the flight feathers. And then there's this big rectangle of secondary feathers. And then this long part, this long blue part, those are the primaries or primary flight feathers. Okay, so anyway, we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail of that. I can't teach you everything about um, sketching birds in one row, but just to know that that's something you can uh, study on your own, it'll really help. Okay, and then uh, here, this picture of the back of the bird shows very well the parts um, of the of the wing and so kind of helping you and sometimes they are different colors so that kind of helps <laughs> so on this bird um, on the left uh, the very uh, top of his back those are um, the scapulars and the uh, coverts and then down below you have the uh, secondaries which are green right here and then these blue and black ones are the primaries. And one thing you can notice here that's kind of important um, is that the way they overlap. So even if, again, you were gonna do just a quick field sketch, but you want to make it look a little bit more uh, um, realistic, you would start at the top and you would think of the bird's top of the back as being like the roof, the roof of a house, a house that is covered in uh, maybe adobe tiles or even even most uh, most um, roofs, you know, have kind of roofing material that overlaps, right? So if you notice, there's an overlap. And so the ones on the top of the bird are on top. That's a good way to remember it. And then as you go down, they um, each layer is goes under, 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 under. And then each of these groups in the secondaries are under. And each of the blue ones, those primaries go under, 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 under. Okay. Is if you guys can see that, say yes in the chat box. And that's definitely something to notice. And you don't have to draw every single feather. We're not going to do that in our demo, which will start in just a minute. Um, but uh, it does help to know the general arrangement in case you want to just do it real quick in the field. Great. I see a lot of yeses and sees. There's no wees. I don't see any French people here. We oui, wee. Oui. Any French people? Okay. So before we, um, just a couple more uh, tips before we get started on our main video. And so um, many of you have taken my sketching classes before. Some of you are new. Um, maybe you didn't watch the hummingbird uh, 
uh, workshop that we did last month and I really recommend that you do and um, that'll really help you to learn more about drawing birds because hummingbirds are a very different shape and size than parrots right and one way you can do that is later on uh, you can go back to this uh, main crowdcast page and you can see uh, below in past events there's the event on sketching hummingbirds and that was also towards the beginning of the Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival event. So you can do that. Yeah. So for those of you who are new, I know I recognize a lot of the names in the chat box. So you guys have been with me before, but have patience because I want to bring everybody along. Um, if you could tell me in the chat box, if you're new to uh, um, my sketching series, just put just type new in the chat box if you're brand new. Good. I've got um, a couple of people saying they were in the hummingbird webinar. Great. Oh, Pranjal says we. <laughs> Pranjal maybe speaks two or three languages. Very good. Okay, great. John is new. Okay, welcome. Welcome. Jomery jo is new. Lauren. Okay, welcome, you guys. So um, again, if you're new, uh, later on, you can go to the box below. This is click here for resources. And that goes to um, the main page where I have the downloadable uh, cheat sheets like this. Because all of my sketching workshops have those so that you can follow along with me. And you can print those out if you're able to. So, and when once you go over to my website, there are other uh, free signups to uh, learn the basics of bird sketching. So um, I can't go into all that now, but um, you can catch up with that later, okay? Okay, welcome, Amy, that you're new. Alvana, great, okay. Dennis is new, welcome. Clarks, okay, so just a few tips that I use. Basically, when I'm sketching, the way I teach is I teach um, kind of quick field sketching techniques. Now I have a degree in scientific illustration as well as a master's degree in biology. So I do tend um, in my own work to get very detailed and I do work with clients doing scientific illustrations, but that's not what I wanna teach people. I wanna teach people like you to have the confidence to get outdoors with any little type of a sketchbook and a, just any kind of plain old mechanical pencil like this and to um, just have some confidence to sketch lightly and loosely. So I just always have you have your pencil very light and loose, um, not holding it low and tight like you might if you're um, writing uh, words, okay? Now keep your pencil moving, because we're gonna pretend that we're sketching a live parrot in the field. And so they're not gonna sit around all day, especially if they hear a predator, they're gonna go squawking off into the wilderness, right? And so you gotta get used to just keeping that pencil moving and avoid erasing until your correct line is placed because it's really easy to draw a line and say, that's the wrong one and erase it. Draw a line, say, that's the right one, eraser. And so if you keep erasing, you won't have the old line to help you place the new line. So I usually try to separate out the two phases of creativity uh, is kind of like how you would separate when you're writing uh, you know, a paper for school or writing a book or an article for a newspaper, that you wanna separate the creation phase from the editing phase. So we're gonna create first by doing a lot of pencil marks and just erase in kind of um, set times, okay? Then, um, Glancing back and forth frequently. What I mean by that is want to make sure that you're looking at your, your reference, whether it's a reference photo like today that we'll have on screen and you also might have uh, downloaded it and uh, or if it's your live bird in the field. So you're really making sure that you look and then draw and look and draw, look and draw because it's very easy to get um, sidetracked by just looking at your paper and not ground truthing as biologists call it. You know, not really making sure that you're drawing from observation and not from memory or imagination, okay? And then uh, enjoy the process over the product, meaning my emphasis is always on the, um, the act of drawing uh, is really just my little secret, don't tell anybody, <laughs> is my little secret that, um, you know, if you're spending 20 or 30 minutes on a drawing, when you're done, you could just, you know, you could just throw, throw that away in the trash bag and I wouldn't care. 
the the focus is that you would have spent 20 or 30 minutes looking at that organism, whether it's a parrot or a great horned owl or, you know, a deer walking by. You're going to learn more about its anatomy and behavior if you're out in the field than you ever would just taking a photograph or a video, right? Or reading about it or watching a movie. So that's really why I have people draw um, to focus their energy and their time because um, we all try to multitask too much. And when you're drawing, you really can't think of anything else. It's kind of like juggling or throwing pottery. If you think of anything else, everything's going to go up in the air, right? Okay, and then just have fun uh, because really we just we just are here to have fun, right? And uh, enjoy the process. Okay, so let me see, where am I? Okay, and then um, so I generally have people think about these six steps. Now I'm going to start the the video um, tutorial in just a second, but really the more time we spend uh, really getting to know our subject and getting to know the ways of looking at something, that's really half the battle is um, just observing closely. Um, and so that really helps. Yes, AJ says it's very therapeutic. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we could really use that this time of day, <laughs> of year. <laughs> So uh, if you're brand new, like many of you said, I have a, a free course on my website called Stick Figures to Songbirds in 60 Minutes. And you can sign up for that at the button below where it says click here for resources. But basically, um, in a nutshell, it just goes over these ideas that I'm going to want you to think about in a few minutes when we go ahead and draw the Cuban parrot, okay? And so uh, one of them, the first thing I do is think about blocking in our basic shapes very lightly and loosely with a feather light touch. So just starting to think about if the shapes are circles or triangles or ovals, that kind of thing. And then next, after you, um, you know, start adding some parts on maybe to the core body, you're going to start adding things like heads and beaks and tails. And then you're going to want to think about what proportion those new parts are to the first one. Uh, and that's especially important and challenging if you're drawing something a different size than it is. You know, like if you're using the, the um, res high resolution photo I printed out for you and you're drawing it smaller or larger than that. Or, of course, if you see a bird in your backyard feeder, you're probably going to draw um, larger in your sketchbook than he might be in real life. So um, you're going to really want to think about proportions, like how big is the head compared to the body? Maybe how long is the bill compared to the wing? Any kind of um, um, com combinations, comparisons that you can make will really help. Then I think of the idea of alignment or what, pro what structures are aligned to other structures. And are they parallel or perpendicular? Um, and that relates to uh, angles here. This other one here is where you're looking at angles and thinking to yourself, is that maybe a 120 degree angle um, or is that uh, like a 90 or no, that's a 45 degree angle, those kind of things. And then um, I like to think of negative shapes. And those are much easier to see when you have um, an image with a white background. So um, I didn't have that with the parrots, but um, um, it'll it'll be even more challenging for you. <laughs> so that the negative shapes and spaces are just those areas that are um, that are not the animal, and uh, so like this little tiny space between the chest and the leg. Okay, so that kind of thing. Okay, let's keep going here. We're just about ready to start. Okay. Okay, then. So I did mention uh, there's reference photos for you to use for practicing sketching. We are going to be drawing this uh, Cuban parrot right here in the um, on the right side today. But um, you can download this again at the link below this video that says click here for resources. Of course, if you're watching this live on Facebook, you could um, you could copy this uh, link anyway. It's on my website, christineelder.com slash sketching parrots. Uh, okay. Okay. And then, um, so, so we're going to go ahead and start sketching this parrot. Who's ready? Say me in the chat box. If you're excited to start practicing drawing together. Who's ready? Nope. I got to 
hold that. <laughs> Okay, so if you're new, what I do is I pre-record this video so that I can narrate live over it and I can pause it anytime. So it's a lot easier than me to try to um, draw live, uh, partly because that's very hard to draw and talk at the same time. Oh, good. Lots of me's. Good. And so um, so it is will be challenging for you also to draw and listen to me talk at the same time. So a lot of you are successful at that. A lot of you have practiced that with me. Um, but don't feel bad if you're having a hard time following along. You might want to just watch this first time. And then, um, and then watch the replay. Um, and again, this will be here that you can watch the replay, or you can also watch it over on my website. I'll be moving it over there and on Birds Caribbean's Facebook page. All right. So, um, so we're drawing this this bird on the top here that's uh, perched on the tree that is eating its fruits. Um, I've added another uh, bird of the same species down below just for you to look because I know some of you guys draw really fast and it also is helpful to see the bird in a slightly different pose, uh, but we are drawing the bird on the top, okay? And so um, I start with this mechanical pencil, it's just a really light pencil that you don't have to keep erasing and those are nice for the field. But any pencil you have will do. Again, for this first time, just follow along with us. Okay, it's great. I see a lot of people are still here hanging in with us. This is where the real challenge and fun begins. And at the end, we can have some Q&A. And if you want, I can invite you up on screen if you'd like to, to show your artwork. That's always a really fun um, aspect of, of what we do with these uh, sketching workshops. Okay, and again, remember that you can minimize the chat box so that this uh, video is full screen and you can really see it. Um, and one, one last thing, in case you're watching this on a phone or a laptop, um, it might be easier, the larger the screen you have, the better if you're gonna watch the replay because then you can really see my steps better. Okay, all right, well, we're gonna get started here. Okay, so here we go. And just to tell you, this is 28 minutes. So we are gonna go a little bit over um, today, but again, you can come back anytime and watch the replay, okay? And we're um, we're at, I don't know what minute we're at right now, but um, oh yeah, we're, we're exactly an hour and four minutes in. So uh, you can come back if you can't stay um, to watch this 28 minute, which will probably take me 30 minutes, plus sharing afterwards. So anyway, let's get going. Okay, so I just start to look at the parts first. I'm just kind of air drawing, looking at the different main parts of the bird. And we've already looked a bit about parrot anatomy already, so that should be pretty good for you. But I'm just kind of, like I said, air drawing, looking at all of my parts, looking at my negative shapes, like the shape of the belly between the branch there um, and all that. So then I'm gonna start and I'm gonna be very light, feather-like touch. And we're gonna go over it a few times, so don't feel bad that you don't see much yet and that it's really light. The idea is for you to try to draw just these basic um, um, geometric shapes, uh, circles and ovals that just describe the body and the head and the bill. and the tail there. I'll answer questions later, so please put those in the chat box later on. And so you should be drawing with the very lightest feather-like touch, even lighter than this. I drew this a little bit darker than I normally would so that you could see it. <laughs> and it might still be pretty light for you, but the idea is for you just to see very, very lightly. I want you to go as light as you possibly can without not seeing the lines. Okay, bye Barbara, bye Bernadette. Please come back later. Now I'm doing some measuring as you see. So um, I will use my pencil and um, you know I'll look back and forth at the different parts and measure them with my pencil. And this, of course, this is when I'm drawing it pretty much exactly the same size. And so I was just measuring the width and the height of the head area. 
and just that oval of the head and that sort of triangle of the bill that we're adding um, in a minute there. Oops, uh-oh, what happened? Sorry, wait, escape, get rid of that. Huh. Sorry, what happened there? I pushed the wrong button. Push the wrong button. Here we go. There we go. Okay, yeah, backed up just a bit. So now the height and width of the head, like I was saying, and um, just kind of looking at it, always looking back and forth with my eyes. And I point with my left hand just to keep me on track, keep me focused where I'm at. Now a little bit of a triangle for the bill. We're going to go back and get this more detail later, but we just want to get the, the basic plan as if it's like the cement foundation of a house. You get that down before you build the walls. And so we're just going to stay really light and loose everywhere. And um, then once, we, um, once we've gotten kind of everything uh, in line, we, you, you can see that we have uh, circles and ovals and triangles for the whole body that I'm going to go back to the head and I'm going to start putting some emphasis on the head because I like to get the head and the bill and the eye, especially early on, because then I feel like it's alive and looking at me and expecting me to, to do a good job and finish the drawing. So next we're going to do the beak. And you see, you know, this very strong beak is really, um, uh, you know, characteristic of the parrots. And it's very strong so they can crack these very hard nuts. Um, and then, of course, you know, eat the fruits and seeds and other things as well. So it's got a very strong arch to it, that upper mandible that overlaps the lower mandible. And then there's kind of a little zigzaggy part right here where the mouth opens. And that helps to crack the seeds like a serrated knife helping you to um, eat uh, steak, right? Okay, so we'll keep going here. We're working on that triangular bill. And I'm looking at the width and the height of that bill, drawing the shape of the upper and the lower mandible, and really noticing that they are different shapes. And then see, I am doing a little bit of cleaning up now and erasing so that I can see the right lines and just double checking again that I have the right uh, width and depth. And always looking back and forth. Then we're going to do the nostril next. So remember, that's kind of an oval that is um, bare skin. And in the center of it is the nostril hole. So we're going to do that in a second here. There we go. That big oval and then the black nostril hole to help them smell things like the fresh, ripe fruit of a tree. Now we're going to get the top of the head. He's kind of got a flat head. You see how I'm doing this little flow line idea um, of the head. And I think I get the forehead a little bit too um, tall here, but I, I think I might fix it later. But anyway, I'm measuring how tall he is there. Double checking always, him or her. So it's got kind of a flat head and neck there. It's almost a horizontal line. I'm going to get that in. And then I'm going to draw the chest. And, and again, we're just kind of getting the width and the depth here, just a little bit more details than we did with the first um, outline. Uh, Measuring the width of the neck there. So we're just going to get, again, the outline um, of the bird. But uh, 
I decided to go ahead and finish the eye because it's kind of creepy to draw a bird with no eye. And you can see how there's a line. You see how um, the eye is sitting right on top of this line that continues on from the closed mouth. And you see, I'll make a line right now. See right there. So I made this uh, light line to show you that the eye is sitting right on top of that line, okay? And then you're going to want to notice how um, large that circle is of the eye, which is a bit larger than the circle that describes the uh, nostrils. So we're trying to kind of decide where it is down from the top of the um, forehead and back from the end of the bill. And I'm measuring how far back there from the end of the bill it is. And how wide the eye itself is. Now this is pretty easy to do when the photograph is right in front of you, but you can also use these same techniques to some extent with um, a live animal in the field. Of course, depends on what kind of animal. Hummingbirds are a little bit fast for this. <laughs> Maybe you can practice drawing your dog sleeping on the porch. That would be easy. They wouldn't be moving very fast. <laughs> so now that he looks a little bit more alive, um, I'm not so creeped out by him and I can finish the rest of the body. I just had to get the eye in there. So he's looking at me, he or she. So we're just noticing now the length of these wings. The wing, you know, covers most of the actual body of the bird. So we just see uh, the bird's right wing in shadow mostly. And then, um, so we're just drawing that oval, or I mean that arc of a line that goes up towards the upper right corner of the uh, piece of paper. And then I'm going to finish up with the chest there and looking at that depth there. Sorry, why does this keep happening? I got rid of those. I'm trying to get rid of that bar on the bottom. And for some reason, it keeps showing. Just a sec. This will give you a chance to catch up here. <laughs> Give you a chance to catch up. There we go. That white bar keeps showing up, and I don't know why. I keep moving my cursor too much. Okay, John, come back for the replay. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so we got the chest there. Now we're gonna work on its left leg. <coughs> Sorry, I was, uh, <coughs> there's a lot of pollen right now. Sorry, I meant to mute that. So right now where I live in Central Oregon, we have a lot of pollen from the pine trees and the juniper trees. <laughs> and sometimes it affects my throat. So I hope I can keep going here. Give you a chance to catch up. <clears throat> so we see his, um, his, his left leg is a little bit in the shadows, but remember how we talked about the parts of the leg and the toes. And what we see right here are, it might be easier for you to see in this image to on your left than this one, because it's a little clearer. Liza, Come back later. Thank you so much. Sorry, we're going over. We had some technical difficulties early on. Um, so it might be easier for you to see on the left here. 
and you can see his toes. Remember, they have four toes, he or she. They have four toes. And so what we see are two of them wrapping around um, the branch. That Those are in the sun. And the other two we can't see. We only see the claws of the front um, toes wrapping around in front. So I was, <clears throat> I keep trying to get this bigger. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm trying to finish up the branch because his, um, his legs and toes will be, his toes will be wrapping around the branch. So I was just trying to get the arch of that branch before I finished adding um, his toes. So now we're going to finish up with his left foot toes. So we're going to get some angles there. And then some rectangles. So that's one toe. And then I've got a toe in the shadows there that I just added that goes in the front. Remember zygodactyl toe arrangement with two in the front and two in the back. So we see two of them in the sun right now. And I just keep putting my pencil back and forth up to the photograph to kind of double check what I'm doing and where I'm going next. <laughs> so next we're doing that second toe that's in the sun that's wrapping around the back of the branch. And then there's two claws. So just like really narrow triangular claws from those front toes. It's helping it hold on to the branch. And you don't really see the claws on those toes in the front in the sun because they are wrapped around the front of the um, stem there. So now I'm measuring how wide that area is between those two legs. So now we're doing his uh, right leg that's in back. It's mostly in shadow, but if you follow along and watch, uh, you can just kind of copy mine or look more closely at it if you can print it out later. Uh, but that one's in the shadows. Again, there's four toes and we can see just sort of two of them a little bit better. See, we have that nice negative shape there between his belly and the branch. So that's something to really notice when you're drawing. So his upper leg is sort of this horizontal rectangle. And then there's uh, a toe right there that's on the, um, the front of the branch. And adding that claw. Firming up the uh, stem line. So I kind of know where to put the rest of the claws. Then we have that one claw in the sun right there. And again, that's just kind of a long rectangle with a little bit of a claw, but not much because it's wrapping around the branch. And then just like with the left leg, we're going to add two claws wrapping around the branch. So that's totally in shadow. So you'll just kind of have to look at my drawing. So we're just going to add two little toe claws wrapping around the branch. So that's why they're so dexterous. So they've got these zygodactyl toe arrangement with two in front and two in back. Gives them a lot more uh, stability and dexterity, uh, climbing around the trees, looking for nuts and fruits than um, a songbird would have. Okay, so now finish with that and just kind of um, looking around. Oh yeah, finishing that branch there. 
We'll darken that up later after we get the tail on there. So now we're gonna start with that big wing. And this is the part that a lot of people get intimidated about. And I'll try to go slow. Um, again, it would be um, great practice for you to look at a field guide and look at the arrangement of feathers. But I'm just gonna kind of show you. I'm gonna kind of show you, I was just putting this um, tracing paper over here just to show you that's the big oval of the whole wing we're gonna draw next. And it's basically in different parts. There's some coverts right there. Then there's the secondaries right there. I mean, those are some more coverts, the primaries and the secondaries. So there's a kind of a lot of different layers. So we're gonna go slow with that, so don't get intimidated. First, we're gonna draw sort of this big area of the shoulder. So you see where the shoulder, how it starts, where it starts from the back um, of the forehead and the neck. The so shoulder starts kind of at the crook of the neck right there. And we're just gonna make this big teardrop shape that describes that whole wing. And then we're going to um, gonna get each of the parts. So just draw this big teardrop just super lightly. And that's its left wing. And then you can see the right wing is a little bit in shadow. We'll add that um, towards the end. We're gonna focus on this one first. Um, so I'm just making a little triangular area for that right wing that's completely in the shadows. Okay, so now I'm just cleaning that up, that little teardrop shape before we start adding each part. I didn't completely erase it, I just lightened it a little bit. Um, so now we're just gonna see the different areas of the wing. There's kind of the thumb area right there that I'm gonna draw, that little oval there. It's actually called the alula. It's made of three feathers, but we're not gonna get too detailed there. And then we have a layer of coverts. There's actually some um, lesser, median, and greater coverts. So there's a bunch of layers of those. So just darkening that up, we'll add some of those individual feathers next. Then we've got the secondary uh, coverts there. The secondary and primary coverts. You're all kind of bunched up together. Then the then the secondaries are those longer green feathers. And so that's one big pile of feathers that we'll add the individual ones later. And as you see, um, the blue are the primaries. So I'm looking at that negative shape there. So this is a really good area to look at here. There's these negative shapes that are these triangles back here that are gonna, oh, sorry, um, here. There's these triangles here of negative shapes that are gonna help you to describe that area down here. So that's what I'm looking at is these little triangles um, to draw, okay? So those are the blue primaries that I'm adding now. They're mostly hidden under the bigger green secondaries. And later on, we'll add the tail. So first, we're gonna work on these individual feathers. Now, this isn't a scientific illustration or even a field guide, so we don't have the time to go into that. We've obviously already been over our time. So I'm just gonna add a little, a few like half circles to describe 
um, some of those feathers in a second here. Kind of thinking of where to go next, looking overall, making sure we got everything. And uh, yeah, I am gonna add the tail, just the rectangle for the tail. And then we'll add those individual feathers later. Again, there's a nice negative triangular shape uh, behind the bird that helps to describe the shape of the tail. So his tail is green and it's kind of, um, kind of going towards us. He's kind of twisted but you can see really well the tail um, in the other birds on your left photographs, especially the lower photograph shows the tail better. And then there's some kind of fuzzy feathers that are totally in shadow that we won't add much detail to later on because they're in, under the shadow. It's a hot summer day maybe, and they're under the shadow of the big left wing. So I'm just finishing drawing that belly there and that area, um, of undertail coverts right there. All right, so now that we have all the parts, <laughs> just kind of thinking and looking at everything. Oh, Clark said you lost power for a minute. I'm glad you're back. Okay, so now we're gonna look at those feathers. We're gonna start adding some individual feathers. We don't wanna spend all day because we'd be here all day, but I'm just gonna add just a couple of these little half circles just to give a suggestion of feathering. And um, I'd love to see you put more energy into this later on and finish it up. You can even add colors later and you can add that on social media um, with the hashtag um, uh, CEBF from the nest. Uh, if Lisa's here, maybe she can add that in again um, to the chat box. But um, now we're just gonna add some half circles of those feathers. And you can just notice that the feathers, thank you, Lisa, the feathers get larger as you go down the bird from his forehead where they're really small, just like on a hummingbird, to getting bigger and bigger as they go down the body. And especially now down there with the chest and under the chest, under the belly that's completely uh, hidden there, they're really, um, uh, sort of fluffy and unorganized, more like down feathers. And then these feathers, a leg that I'm drawing right now, just a few parallel lines to kind of make it look like loose feathers. Yes, Lisa says, share your drawings with Birds Caribbean with the hashtag CEBF from the nest. Okay, and double checking that negative shape there between the belly there. And just gonna give it a little bit of shadowing. Don't have much time to get that real detail, but you can add a lot more dark values to that later. We're almost done, we have about 10 more minutes here getting those individual feathers in. We've waited to the last. So we're gonna start looking more at those parts. So right there, are those scapular feathers, just a lot of half circles. You can add more of them later if you want. And then there's the rows of coverts, they call them, that cover the primary flight feathers. And so we're gonna add some of those, a little bit more details. And a few of them, I'll give an example there where I added the center uh, line of an individual feather. But mostly we'll just do these little ovals and just notice how they overlap, which feather is on top of which feather. It's so later on if you want, you can add all the shadowing you want to those. Then that next layer of coverts, those are bigger and longer feathers and they overlap starting at the back. Remember how we talked about that? So I'm just starting at the, the top of the bird and going around with some kind of uh, U-shaped lines. We're not counting them. There, there are specific numbers of feathers, but we don't wanna get in the weeds here. So we're just gonna do some half circles there. 
or U shape or L shape, whatever you want to call it. Good. I see most of you guys are still hanging in there. That's great. I know you're probably past your lunchtime or dinner time by now, but just demonstrated there just a few examples of how you might draw individual feathers with a center um, rachis and then the little plumes on the either side. So now I'm drawing the secondaries and there's three feathers that are actually called tertials that I'm drawing now. Pretty sure those are the tertials. And each one of those is a little bit longer than the last one. And they all overlap kind of like the um, tiles of the roof of a house, like we talked about earlier. And then there's a few more that are overlapping. You know, this doesn't have to be perfect because a, a wing can be in a million different um, uh, organizations, depending on what mood the bird is in and how tight they have their feathers to their back. So it uh, doesn't have to be exactly like you see in the photo. I'm just trying to get the basic idea. All right, so that's the, that's the secondaries. And I add a little plumes there for one of the feathers. It's just an example. And then the blue primaries, you see you sticking out under the green secondaries. And most of those are kind of hidden. They're folded under the secondaries. So you just don't see much of those, but I'm just drawing a few parallel lines to just give the suggestion of them. Remember, I hope you guys are following along because maybe you can uh, share at the end. Maybe we'll have a few people come up on screen like we had Lisa and Leah on screen earlier. If you want. Now that right wing that's mostly in shadows, I'm just going to add that. And I noticed the shadowed area I had in a little bit wrong area. So that's why I'm always doing those measurements like you see with my pencils and angles and alignments. And so I'm going to put most of that wing in the shade. You see it's really, really dark. You can add a lot more dark later to make it look a lot more three-dimensional, but we're just trying to get you started here with this sketch that you can work on as long as you want later on because <laughs> there's no right or wrong way or right or wrong amount of time to work on something. I could easily probably put another couple hours into this bird to make it look more realistic, but we're just trying to get you started here, uh, learning about the parts of, and shapes of the feathers of a parrot. So the parrots um, have this real squared off tail and it's not very long uh, compared to the macaws and the parakeets, which have a tail that sometimes is as long as the whole body. But these guys, their tail isn't much longer than the um, those blue primaries, maybe just a few more inches. So you just want to notice kind of how long that tail is compared to the end of the flight feathers. So now I'm just looking everywhere. I'm going to kind of just wrap it up. Again, we could make put a lot more details here, but I'm just going to fix his uh, forehead there. It was a little bit too uh, arched. So this is just a point where you can kind of look at your shapes, see how you like them. I think I've got it a little bit too pinched right there in his nostrils, but I don't know. I don't think I fixed that, but <laughs> fix is fixing the bill there. Remember that really strong arched bill for eating the seeds and nuts. So I'm just strengthening my line, pushing a little harder to give it a nice outline to make it look a little bit more finished. And then, of course, later on, you can add uh, a lot more details or you can add color patterns. And this parrot, this basic parrot shape is pretty much the same for all of those other parrots we saw, all those other endemic parrots. So um, you can put any color pattern on it if you want. You know, you can put the Puerto Rican parrot or the imperial parrot color patterns. You don't have to do this Cuban parrot. 
So whichever parrot might be your favorite of the endemic species you could do. Because again, most of these have a fairly uh, consistent um, outer body shape, a parrot, basically a parrot shape. <laughs> We're just about to finish up here and then we'll answer any questions uh, and then we can have some sharing. Uh, I could bring uh, Lisa back on if she wants to answer any questions and say goodbye. Uh, and we could also um, have anybody up if they're brave enough to show their sketch. <laughs> you see, my sketch isn't that great. I was just doing, trying to do sort of a quick field sketch demo for you. It could be a lot more detailed. Um, so don't be, don't be afraid to show yours. See Debbie and Eliana says they're coloring theirs. Um, so Lisa, if you want me to bring you back up, um, to answer questions, you can say, um, me or say yes. And say, I'm going to get rid of this. You can look at that later on. Again, remember, watch the replay. Okay, Lisa, we're gonna bring Lisa back up. And um, Hannah, Hannah's brave enough to go. She's always good at keeping up. She's had lots of practice with me. So don't, don't feel bad if you're not as good as Hannah because she can. Has, she's done over 40 episodes with me. I have a whole series that I do. And there she is. Okay. And we're going to put her. Okay. We've got your mic on again, Lisa. Did you follow along, Lisa? Or were you too busy in the chat box? Uh, I did follow along. I did not do a drawing today, <laughs> but um, I've been following along. Okay. So Pranjal, he wants to go and, and, and um, Kira, let's see, who should I do first? Uh, the Clarks. Oh, we haven't shown, had the Clarks before in the past. Let me um, invite the clerks up and then we'll try um, Hannah and Pranjal and Kira. This is really the most fun part, Lisa, that I just love. So we invite folks up and um, depending on their internet connection, it may or may not work. <laughs> Catherine says, thank you. Pranjal has had lots of experience drawing Caribbean birds. Yes, because he's... Uh, He's in Puerto Rico. And um, Dennis has to leave now. Thanks for the presentation, Aaliyah. He's thanking her. Mm -hmm. Seeing orange wings overhead. That's great. Good. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if the Clarks are working. I'm going to try um, inviting Pranjal up because I know his video works. And um, Kira, I know Kira wanted to go up. So maybe I'll invite um, her next. So I did click. Oh, there we go. There's Pranjal. For some reason, it's not showing the video. Um, oh, congrats. Oh, okay. Okay, now it should. Yeah. Oh, oh, right, right. Yeah. There you go. Walker. Hi, thanks for joining us today. What do you got for us? You Just go? let me quickly finish. My mom will show you hers while I'm just finishing up mine. And then you can show. Okay. So here's my mom. Hi, mom. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Look at the detail on that. And then this, um, I just need to color the branch and then I'm it. Oh, wow. nice. There you go. That's Good amazing. Job. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Pranjal. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Very good. Very well done. Kira, I'm going to try to invite you up. You'd said you wanted to come up. Alvana says, really love this session. Have to leave now. Yeah, come on back for the uh, replay if you can. It'll be here and on Facebook. Okay, so Kira's accepting and connecting. There you go. Hi there. Hi. What do you've got for us, Kira? Oh, there wow. we have it. Nice job on those wing feathers. Very good. That's very accurate. Awesome. Very impressive. A little while ago then, um, it didn't work. So I had to 
um, reload and it was hard to do the back feet. So yeah, they're kind of in shadows, but if you can look at the those other images of feet or look at some feet online, that might help you. Mm -hmm. It is um, it's not always ideal, even especially when you're in the field, to be able to see all of the parts. So that's why the more you can study the parts of the animal that you want to sketch, the more you'll know how to draw it, even if you can't see it very well, if, even if it's in shadows. But that's a good start, Kara. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Really Thanks. nice. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Bye. Very good job. Okay, how about um, Jordan wants to show his from Antigua? If you invite um, Natalia Lawrence. Okay, wait a minute. Let me look. Oh, you know. Oh, that's who that is. Oh, Natalia Lawrence is Jordan. Okay. Yes. And it's her son Jordan. Oh, okay. Oh, and I just clicked. Oh, sorry. I clicked Hannah. That's Rebecca. Anna, and then I'll click, um, I'll click Jordan. Oh, there we go. Hi, Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca. Yes. Hi. Oh, you're, you're somebody different. I thought you were Hannah. Sorry. Great. Look at that. Wonderful. Oh my, oh my gosh. I can't believe how, how talented your audience is, Christine. <laughs> have you done any That's of these with me before, Rebecca? Yes, I have. <laughs> Great. And That's I've been good. drawing birds my whole life. So oh, okay. Hey. Okay. Really fun. Okay, good. Thank Excellent. you. That's a great job, Ben. Really okay. Amazing. So Thanks for sharing. Now we'll invite Jordan up and then Hannah. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me see. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Jordan, there we go. We're inviting Jordan up. Isn't this fun, Lisa? This is the best it part. It is. It is. I'm always amazed when people can actually follow along to these videos because they do seem very fast. <laughs> yeah. But that's keep, that keeps people from overthinking it too much. Exactly. Just like in the field. Exactly. Those birds are coming and going from mm -hmm. a flowering shrub and, uh, you know, the fruit's not going to last very long. So they got to jump in there and get exactly. it. Okay, Jordan. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Welcome. Hold okay, that up. Hold it. Still yeah. closer, a little higher. Good. Okay. Good. Great job. Was that fun? Yes, it was. Jordan, and how old are you? How old are you now, Jordan? Seven. Seven. Wow. Oh my gosh. Seven years. That's amazing. And where Jordan. do you live? Antigua. Antigua. And do you have a favorite bird that you can share on the island? Yes. A broadwing hawk. Broadwing hawks. Yeah. Broadwing hawks. Very cool. Yeah. I like them too. Great, Great well, job, Jordan. For sharing. And come join me again next time. Great start. Okay, bye bye, Jordan. Thanks. Bye for now. <laughs> bye. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Hannah. Hannah wants to go. And then Victoria. We'll have Victoria next. Victoria wants to share. I'm so amazed. So many people are are getting out there. They're brave. Don't worry, there's only 59 people watching right now. <laughs> a lot of them had to go to lunch or dinner. <laughs> oh, Rebecca, you said, um, Hannah, yours says rejected. So you might have to try that again. Um, okay, okay, so uh, we'll go next with um, Victoria. Let's see, why can't I get Victoria? It doesn't have the plus sign there. Oh, okay. Let me keep moving on. Uh, Anne says, what a great smile, Jordan. Puntito said it was fun. Ciao. Okay, good. Okay, anybody else want to go up? Say me in the chat box if you want to show your work. And we know these are works in progress. I'd love to see you keep working on them a bit and then share them on social media like Lisa shared in the chat box. That hashtag is CE. BF from the nest. 
All one word, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. We would love to have you share with us and we'll post it on our Facebook page or our Twitter. We'll retweet or we'll share on our Facebook. Oh, Reed. Okay. Reed says, um, think you're brave enough to show your drawing. Okay. We invited Reed and the clerks had been accepted. So we'll see who comes next. It all depends on people's internet connection, what shows up first. So both clerks and Reed had been invited Hi. up. Here we go. Hi. Hello. There's my. Also, hi to Ruben in the chat. <laughs> hi to Ruben in the chat. And what is your name? My name is Reed. Reed. Okay, I pronounced that right. Beautiful. Yeah. You've got the leaves and fruit. Thank you. Really have you been good. drawing birds before? Yeah, I have. I also draw bugs. Oh, I love <laughs> bugs. What's your favorite bug? I like bees. I used to be a beekeeper when I, I was younger. <laughs> Oh, oh wow. These are very really important cool. for having me. Very important pollinators. Yeah. Oh, I love your shirt. Yeah, look at the yeah. poodles. Thank and you. Lepidopterans. Oh, I want one. I want a shirt like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll give me a link to where you bought that. Okay, I'll try and find it. Thank you so yeah. much. Are you very on one cool, of the island? Reed. Huh? Are you coming from one of the islands or someplace else I'm in the world? I'm from Texas. Oh, Texas. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine too. You're close. Close. Okay, Reed, um, join us again sometime. Yeah, Bye. I will. This was fun. Bye. Bye. I like your mural. Yes. How creative, huh? Okay. Let me see if there's any more. Um, um, Ruben says, I love the glint in the eyes and the feathers are so well done. I guess you were talking to Reed there. Great. Good. Okay. Mary Grace says, I am willing to show my parrot. Wait, did I click on her? Oh. I'm clicking. For some reason, some of them won't let me click on them. Oh, wow. It's, wait. Um, hmm, sometimes. Wait, I think I invited the wrong person. Oh, no, I just invited Reed again. No. Okay, Mary, I don't know what's happening. It won't. Oh, maybe I can find you in the attendees there. Just a sec. Um, live now. There's another place I can click to invite people up. Uh, and sometimes that might work. Um, so I hope you guys had a lot of fun today. And I'm um, just going to try and invite her up here if I can find her. Uh, if there's any questions you have for Lisa about parrots or Birds of Caribbean or anything else, why don't you put them in the chat box while I'm trying to find Mary here. We yeah, got to wrap we still it up. Have, um, we still have Aaliyah as well. So if anybody has a parent oh, okay, question, great. you can ask our um, presenter, Aaliyah. Okay. Anybody else want to go up? I can't seem to get Mary up. Okay. Courtney. Courtney says yes. Courtney, does that mean you want to go up? Um, <laughs> let me see who else wants. Yeah, Mary. Yeah, for some reason it won't let me get Mary up. Um, Sharon says thanks. So much fun. Okay, Rebecca. Hannah. Okay. Rebecca Hannah. I know her real name is Hannah, not Rebecca. That's your mom. So we accepted you. See if that's going to work this time. Usually it works. There we go. Hi. Hi. How are you today? Good. So um, right while you were doing the drawing, I did uh, five parrots. Five. Wow. And I even started painting. Wow. Nice you colors. Are so fast. Wow. That's really good. Good job. Oh, yeah. There we go. Excellent. And then these were from the, the screen you showed. Oh, fast. Yeah, that's fast. Oh, there we go. Very nice. Beautiful. Really nice. Nice coloration on that cute parrot. They have the beautiful white forehead. 
Super job. Is that prawn dolphin. How did you do that so fast? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, you've had lots of practice with me. Uh -huh. Is it hot there today in Texas? Uh, it's warm. It's like 90 degrees. <laughs> That's pretty boring. We would call that boiling here in Oregon. Well, thank you. Um, hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Stop. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Well, what do you think, Lisa? Are we going to wrap it up here? We probably should. Yeah. We've been going on for quite a while. So. I know. That always happens to me. I end up going on for two hours. But yeah. Um, so this is good. You have any closing remarks? I don't. I would just say learn all you can about parrots and other birds and wildlife and keep keep practicing your drawing. Nature sketching and journaling is a great way to just um, enjoy and appreciate nature. So good job, everybody. Thanks for thanks for coming. And thanks again to Aaliyah and Christine for uh, for putting on this excellent session. Good. Well, I just put in the chat box the main page for my Crowdcast page where you can see that replay of the Hummingbird uh, event that we did last month now. Uh, and there's some other ones on birds that you can also see. Um, they're not specific to the Caribbean, but they are birds that live in the Caribbean, including uh, thrushes and woodpeckers. And I've done one on warblers and a few others. So you can do a lot more practice over there. So go over that Crowdcast page and check those out sometime. Ruben says, thank you. Pranjal says, bye. Okay, Meg, something about Phoenix Landing. Oh yeah, that's a kind of a, 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 um, a parrot rescue group, I think. Have you heard of them? Mm -hmm. Phoenix Landing, yeah. Okay, great. Well, I guess we're going to end this broadcast. It's about time for my lunch, that's for sure. Okay, we're going to get okay, going. Thanks, everybody. Bye. We'll see you again. Take care.